Okay, this is the last of the little feet extras. Again, these are all level one feet analysis options. And I wanted to go over the BBR or boundary-based registration. So just a quick reminder, what's BBR? Where did we see it? It was right here. So recall the GUI. Uh, this is where we set the registration information. This is where your subject's structural goes. This is where your the MNI goes. This is here, but this is just the default. This is what the default GUI looks like. And again, the steps, the whatever's under this window explains how registration is done to this image. So this is the target. So this corresponds to the registration of your bold data to your subjects functional, or sorry, your subjects anatomical. And then this is the second step where the anatom subjects anatomical is registered to the MNI template. And I talked about the, these options last time. So typically you're gonna choose 12 degrees of freedom here. That's the first step to get things started well. And then um, I would click this box here to use nonlinear registration. So they work together to give you a good result. It's not clicked here, but um, I highly recommend it. Anyway, that was last time. I wanna focus on this BBR option here because if you've been using FSL for a while, you may have noticed that this used to say six and then it switched to BBR and you might've been like, whoa, what's BBR? It's not a number. But it's just a different image registration strategy. So this is not a brief paper overview. It's, it's, it's way too brief to even be called that, but this is the paper uh, where this method was introduced. So by uh, Doug Grieve and Bruce Fischel. And it's such an intuitive and cool idea and it really does, at least empirically, I, I, I trust the results of the paper and empirically the results I've seen uh, indicate that this registration does a better job than a traditional six degree of freedom registration. Okay, so quick review, image registration, what's the goal? Well, here's my target, here's the image I wanna match up to here. In this case, let's assume that this target is the structure structural for the subject, and this is their bold data. Okay, so typically, you know, as I did last time, the goal is I'm gonna, you know, fix the grid, I'm gonna scoot it around until, and last time I said, what we're trying to do is match up the voxel intensities from here to here. So I pick this voxel here, and after resampling, I pick this voxel here, and my goal is to make it match with this voxel here, and multiply that by all your voxels and do it simultaneously. That's what the traditional affine registration does. Um, but boundary-based registration, as the name implies, actually uses the boundary instead. So we're still gonna use the image intensity of the bold data, but in a very different way. So it has an extra step. That first step is to identify the white matter boundary in your structural. So obviously we can't find the white matter boundary in our um, functional data because the, the contrast isn't good enough. But the structural, obviously we can do that and there are tons of ways to do that. If you use FreeSurfer, you can get a really good result. Um, FSL uses uh, FAST, which is a faster version. So anyway, the idea is you get this boundary first and now instead of comparing this voxel to this voxel, what we're going to do is we're gonna compare voxels on either side of the boundary, or image intensities on either side of the boundary, which, I don't know, to me it almost seems overwhelming. So, let me just do the cartoon example. I'm gonna put my boundary down here, and now I'm gonna keep scooting it around until I get to a point where on one side of the boundary it's dark because this boundary is white matter boundary. So. My image, uh, I realize I said that this was, pretend this is uh, the bold data. Obviously, it would be dark and white matter and bright and gray matter, so just use your imagination. Humor me. So anyway, the idea though is the same. The intensity should be very dark on one side of the boundary and very bright on the other side of the boundary. So the idea is to maximize the difference in the image intensity on this side of the boundary versus this side. So intuitive, right? So here's the image from the paper. So um, this is the cortical gray matter. Now this is done correctly. So the gray matter is brighter than the white matter because this is a T2 star image that we're seeing in the background. I know this might look overwhelming, but I'm gonna 
step you through it. So first step, do an image segmentation and you get this guy right here. This is the white matter surface. Uh, there's also a pleal surface. Um, technically we don't need that. We only need this white matter surface. Then you split the white matter surface up into a bunch of points that are equally spaced along the surface. And then for each point, you pick, you put a perpendicular line through the point and you use that line to pick a voxel on one side that's hopefully in white matter and the other side that's hopefully in gray matter, at least that's your goal. And you get this GV, which is simply the gray matter intensity, the intensity of this voxel, and you get the intensity of this voxel, WV, because our hope is that this is in white matter. And then there are all these parameters uh, that you can set. How far from the boundary do you look? Um, you can take into account this thickness. Um, and then there's this QV thing here, which is the cost function that's used. Basically, you're trying to maximize this difference, the hopefully gray matter minus white matter difference, and then there's a scaling value just to regularize it. Anyway, hopefully you have the basic idea, and that's just that we want to compare this to this, and we want that difference to be big. And again, like anything, it's really simple. We're doing it for this one point, but actually we're doing it for all the points at once. So hopefully that makes sense to you. What? Where's my, well, I don't know what happened to the, the heading. What are the steps of the optimization? So there's an initialization. So that uses standard approaches like flirt. So just give it a good start using a traditional, and this is, by the way, this isn't nonlinear. This is still linear. And it's still six degrees of freedom because we're in, uh, using the same subject. So anyway, use something to give it a start and then you do a coarse search. So you don't look at all the points along the white matter. So I'm gonna flip back, fasten your seatbelt. You don't use all the points, but you say pick every 10 points or something. And you get things lined up so that um, you've maximized this difference across every 10th point. And, oh sorry, 10th, every 100th vertex, that makes more sense. And you do a really, um, you do a gradient of descent approach. And then you refine the search. And then you do a second gradient of descent using all vertices. So basically, you run through the algorithm just using every hundred vertex, and then you throw them all into the, the works and repeat. And it's just a six degree of freedom image registration because the images are from the same subject. So you don't need it to be flexible. So, here is the figure from the paper. I think this might be figure three or something like that. So uh, here are the players. Here is the structural image. And so step number one is to find the white matter boundary. So that is shown here in red. Here are the bold data. And here are the results from three methods. So BBR, the star of the show, and these two are uh, the correlation ratio image registration. So these different strategies, uh, correlation ratio and NMI, uh, which is uh, normalized mutual information, they use um, different equations to compare the voxel intensities between, as you're scooting things around, between the target and the uh, mobile image. So, and they have varying degrees of um, uh, success, but specifically they're designed to work with images where, where the uh, white matter is bright, where the intensities won't match. So intensity of white matter here is dark, white matter here is bright, gray matter here is bright, uh, gray matter here is dark. So anyway, um, these two are the, the most typically used uh, intermodality registration uh, cost functions, and then BBR. So these little green arrows are helping us to focus on the regions where BBR does a much better job. So if we look here, this little bit here, uh, you can see that the gray matter is well contained in this little circle, uh, the white matter boundary, whereas here you get some spillage, and it's very similar for the correlation ratio. And here's another part where there isn't a good matchup. We have this dark batch here, but if we go to the BBR, it's much better. And there are plenty of other places beyond where the green arrows are pointing where you can find differences, I'm sure. Um, 
Yeah. So, and as I said, when I've run this in the past, I've found BBR is better. So I was curious because it's always nice to see the comparison. I'm telling you, I've seen it before. But um, if somebody else is also using the DSO08 data, maybe we could purposely run different pipelines and compare the results. So if you're interested in seeing um, how BBR compares to regular register, the six degree of freedom registration using correlation ratio, or yeah, I think correlation ratio is the default in FSL. Um, I can run correlation ratio, you can run BBR, and then um, you can email me the final statistics map at the end of this, and we can do a little side by side. Likewise, if you want to see the difference between FNERT, the nonlinear registration, and the linear, uh, we can have somebody do that. So that again is registering the subject structural to the MNI template. So email me or just post on the Facebook page and um, we can set that up. And by the way, if you haven't seen it, um, there is, uh, <laughs> when I was uh, showing you guys the uh, functional data before for the open fMRI data, I noticed that the labels were missing. I actually thought this was fine because um, I've used those data for so long and I thought that they, I'm pretty sure they were compared to the original results. So I thought right left swaps were checked for, but whatever. I mean, there are, there are so many things to do when you do things like this. So anyway, it turns out that it, those, um, the fact that those markers were missing, the right left, the, there was something wrong in the header and we could get a right left swap. So luckily we haven't gotten too far. We haven't gotten to the part where we scripted this analysis and ran it for all subjects and hopefully you haven't been click click clicking away in the GUI and running it for everybody. Um, so download the data again, rerun the initial pre-processing steps on it and we'll work from there because otherwise we're going to end up with a right left swapped. Then again if you're not using the data for anything maybe it doesn't matter if you're just doing it to go through these steps. Um, but I'm going to download it again and start over um, because I, we really haven't done too much so far. It won't take that much time to redo. So please do that. So thanks a lot. Uh, please join the Facebook group or follow on Tumblr or follow on Twitter or all three. And next time, what are we going to do next time? So next time I'm going to step you through the output directory of FSL. There's a ton of files in there and it's helpful to know what they all are. All right. So have a great day.